Welcome to the Logitech G Drive to Win series, episode number three. My name is Suelo Almeida, I'm a professional racing driver and coach and also creator of the Motor Racing Checklist. In this video, we'll talk about what I believe to be the most important factors on driving fast and safely, understanding the capabilities of the car. This is crucial before you start making high risk decisions like braking later or being more aggressive with the inputs. What are these capabilities? One, braking. This may sound obvious, but I've seen way too many students being under the limit under braking. You want to make the car slow down as quickly as possible and you need to know how much of it it can do. While testing the car on track, brake a little bit, then brake more and more until you find the limit of deceleration. On cars without ABS, that limit is when you start locking the tires. And on cars with ABS, that limit shows up as ABS activation, vibration, ABS lights flashing, etc. When on a straight line, it is important to find this full braking pressure to have an idea of how much and how late you will be able to brake when you're actually driving on the full limit. Don't be overly careful with braking on a straight line on the very first laps. When working in real life with high performance driving students, the most dangerous moments happen when the student is not confident about braking, brakes too soft on entry, fails to control the speed and goes too fast into the corner, and then find themselves with more energy than the car can handle on apex and exit, causing undersheer and potentially going off track. During the process of experimenting with the braking performance, it's actually totally expected to overslow the car. While overslowing, you will be in a safe environment to absorb and understand all the braking capabilities and more confidently set later and later braking references in the next few laps. 2. Turning The key here is to turn the wheel more and more until you get into some sort of turning limit. The very first state we want to get when learning a car's turning capability is understeer where the front tires reach the limit first and the car is unable to generate too much more rotation than that. With understeer, the car locks itself into a much more predictable and consistent path, which allows us to understand how much speed it can carry at a given corner. The final speed we will be able to carry with a more balanced car will not be much higher than what we can already carry through understeer. So that gives us a very good idea of how much speed we will carry into the corner when really driving at the full limit. This way, with the correct undersheared testing of a corner, we can actually determine how much we will end up braking when finding the limit. 3. Braking progressively later and trail braking into the corner to minimize the undersheer. The later we brake into a corner, the more speed we'll need to be dealt with under braking at the same time we're already starting to turn the wheel into the corner. One of the effects of this is higher braking density and more weight transfer, keeping the front tires loaded for longer, causing the car to rotate more into the corner. This will minimize the undersheer and eventually cross the line into oversheer territory, where the fronts have so much rotating capability that the rears will not be able to cope with it. When we get to this point, we are most likely very close to the ideal braking references, if you are efficiently using the braking capability of the car in the braking zone, of course, and we start playing with the car's balance through weight transfer, steering with the pedals and slight counter steer. This is where we need fast reaction and attention to correct the balance of the car, as well as the need to understand weight transfer and inducing oversteer and understeer. So follow these three steps and you will have a much more pleasant and efficient recognition of the new car track combo, for example, as well as quickly getting up to speeds very safely. This is incredibly important for real life track days and racing events as you can communicate with the limits of the car in a very safe way. <laughs> 